Um, when we when we graph this thing, y equals negative x squared plus 4x minus 3, uh, this, it's, it's got a lot of stuff to it, you know, a lot of things I need to know. So at first, you've got to identify those coefficients. What's the a, what's the b, what's the c? In this situation, a is going to be negative 1, b is going to be 4, and c is going to be negative 3. So they're right there. Okay? The coefficients, the coefficients a, if you look at it right away, you'll notice that a is less than 0. So therefore, we know that because a is negative, the parabola has to open down. It's going to be one of those unhappy people, right? First, calculate the x-coordinate of the vertex. That's, that's a nice thing to have because it tells you which way to graph left and right of this middle point you know, on your axis of symmetry. So the opposite of 4 over 2 times negative 1, we have negative 4 over negative 2, which is going to equal 2. So my x-coordinate of my, of my uh, vertex is going to be 2. So that's a nice thing to have. And you might even want to put yourself together an xy table over here and put the number 2 right in the middle. So you might want to start um, plotting the points maybe 0, 1, 2 in the middle, 3 and 4. That, that gives you, you know, we know right away that this point right here is going to be that vertex. So we want to put that in the middle of the graph. If you find the y coordinate, we put the 2 in there and we have negative 2 squared. Now notice that that negative is on the outside of 2 squared. So that's important to note that it's the opposite of whatever x squared is, not like negative 2 quantity squared, which would give us a positive 4. That's not what we want here. Plus 4 times 2 minus 3. And so we have negative 4 squared, or we have negative 4 here, plus 8 minus 3. So negative 4 plus 8 is 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. We have the point 2, 1. And we go ahead and plot that point right away. 2, 1. We know that this is going to open down, and we know that the high point right here, that's the high point, right? That's that maximum point, and this whole thing is going to open down. That is going to be our vertex, and that's going to give us our axis of symmetry, and our axis of symmetry is going to go right through there. And so, uh, when we do the points to the left and to the right, first of all, we know our vertex is 2, 1. Um, we drew the axis of symmetry. x equals 2. Excellent. And then we identify the y-intercept, c. That's a nice point to have because it makes it really easy for us. If we go to the y-intercept being negative 3, I go 1, 2, 3. Look, I have my negative 3. So I know I have the point 0, negative 3. Now, a real easy way to graph this curve, instead of doing all of this stuff that you might want to do over here, is we know that this has an axis of symmetry. And if I look at this point right here, and it's 1, 2 away from my axis of symmetry, if I go right on the other side of it, 1, 2 away the other side, I have that other point. And it takes two points to make a line, but three points to make a parabola. And I have three points, so watch that. Bang. Oh, that's not a very good curve, is it? Let's try that again. Nice, smooth, parabolic curve. I'm sure yours looks better than mine does right now. Then reflect this point, and we reflected it over, and we found uh, when we went two over and two more over, we had four, negative three, and, and look at what we have. The function for, um, you could do another value if you wanted. Really don't have to. I only need three points to make that curve, so I already did it. We talked a little bit about that minimum and maximum values already. And if we look down here at these minimum and maximum values, um, all they're saying is that uh, the, vertex, the vertex's y coordinate is a minimum value of the function. Um, minimum value, okay, minimum value opening up. So if it opens up, a must have been positive. And if it opens down, a must have been negative. That's all they're saying at the bottom of those notes there. 
And right here on our last page of notes on page 95, talking about section 4-1, it says, tell whether the function y equals negative 3x squared plus 12x minus 6 has a minimum value or a maximum value. Then find the minimum and maximum values. And so when I look at this thing, does it have a minimum or a maximum? Well, look, negative people, negative people, frowning. Okay, sad, sad people, frowning. All right? So negative people frown, this thing must have a maximum, a up value. Okay? So A, because it's less than zero, the function has a max value. Find it. Well, when I go to find it, I put in my opposite of B over 2A, negative 12 over 2 times negative 3. 2 times negative 3 was negative 6. Negative over negative makes a positive. 2. There's my x coordinate of my max. I put 2 in back here, right here and right here. When I put 2 in there, I get negative 3 times 2 squared plus 12 times 2 minus 6. 2 squared was 4. Well, we could use our calculator for this one, maybe. Let's, let's make sure we put, let's, let's use our calculator over here. Let's do um, negative 3, parenthesis, and we got 2, parenthesis, squared, right? Plus 12 times 2, plus 12, parenthesis, 2, parenthesis, minus 6. Oh, let me go back here. I missed a little keynote here. Times, there you go, minus 6. And, uh, and I ended up with 6. So I have the point. Maximum value of y is 6. The highest that this graph is ever going to reach is 6. My vertex is the point to 6. Now I want you to take a moment, pause the video, and go ahead and try um, these four problems. Let's say we're going to give you five minutes on this. So go ahead and feel free to pause it for five and, uh, and take a look at those and see how we did.